Hi everybody, Jason here from Short Course World. Just want to talk to you real quick about the, uh, about roll centers. Now this applies to basically all RC vehicles, but we're really going to focus on off-road vehicles here. And there's a lot of debate, a lot of people will tell you different things, and I've heard very experienced racers make mistakes or just improperly understand a roll center. Ultimately, the bottom line is, I feel like uh, changing the roll center has different effects based on how much traction there is on the surface. But generally speaking, you want to add ball stud washers underneath your inner camber links uh, to add traction and take them away to remove traction, generally speaking. By adding ball stud washers underneath the inner ball studs, meaning the ball studs on the camber links closer to the chassis center line, as you raise the ball stud, you lower the roll center. So it's kind of an opposite on the chassis. Now, if you have vertical ball studs on your rear hubs or on the, the front caster blocks in your vehicles, if you raise them, it raises on the outside by the wheel. If you raise the ball stud or lower the ball stud, it's it's normal. So if you raise the ball stud, roll center goes up. Lower the ball stud, roll center goes down. So it's it's pretty simple. But uh, anyways, there's a guy on YouTube. Uh, I don't know him personally, but his username is Razathorn, and he has a pretty good video explaining it and demonstrating it in a real life uh, real life scenario. So I got his permission to go ahead and show you this short clip and there's a link in the description below showing you where you can actually access his video directly. So take a look at this video and then I'll explain some more about how I feel about Roll Center and, and why I believe it works the way it does. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Here's a demonstration of Roll Center on a B4 uh, world that I've got one of the ball studs here mounted with a lot of spacers. It's really high. This lowers the roll center significantly. And on this side, I've actually got it, if you can see it, it's mounted underneath the U-brace. Um, this does bind up once I get to about here, but don't worry, we're not gonna go that far. Uh, in order to do that, I've had to move the link out, one hole on the brace and one hole in the hub, but I've done it on both sides. It shouldn't make any difference here. Uh, I've got two arbor plates, just uh, solid mild steel. They're going to keep the tires from moving left and right to take out the tire contact patch from the equation at all. So let's just assume that traction is a constant here. I'll just demonstrate the differences between roll when you have the link mounted this high, which is lower roll center, and this low, which is a dramatically higher roll center. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to put this car here in between the arbor plates so when I'm pushing on each side, uh, it will not go anywhere and you will only see the roll in the chassis. I've got an old V2 shock here which has a spring on it which is going to prove that I am putting the same amount of force onto each side. So I'm going to put that on the shock tower and first off the high roll center side I'm going to compress that almost all the way down. As you can see it doesn't really compress the shock all that much on this side. Now this is a lateral force, just like the car is in a corner, it's rotating around the center of gravity. Now we're going to take this shock off, throw it on the other side, switch hands that I'm holding here recording, and now I'm going to push onto the side with the length that's really high, which is the lower roll center. And watch now, much more pronounced roll effect as I compress this all the way. See the, you can actually see the shock compressing pretty significantly. Now we'll just repeat it on the other side just for a double check to make sure I'm not smoking crack here. And as I compress this in, next to no movement, comparatively speaking to the other side, you can actually see the car as I do this, and I'll just even get it working really good does not really roll that direction. Move the shock over to the other side once again. Back to the high link, low roll center. And work this shock. And you can clearly see that, that side is rolling significantly more. The shock is actually compressing very visibly.